Welcome back everybody. I hope you're doing well. So that's it. Today we are taking down the Big Shallow. It's only been up and running for like three months with this current layout. But because of the issues that we have with the stand, I don't really see any other way but to take it down. So the plan is to empty it out completely. Then we can reinforce the cabinet. And after that we can come up with a nice new layout. So for anyone that's new to the channel or hasn't seen any of the recent videos, basically two weeks ago I found out that the cabinet of the Big Shallow is starting to cave in in the center. So there's a slight curve to the top layer of the stand. And that's causing, causing some extra pressure on the size of the glass because we have a little foam mat underneath. And here you can see that the foam mat is just, uh, it's not really compressed. There's actually a slight gap between the foam mat and the glass as well. But on the sides, the foam mat is a lot more compressed on this side as well. Now it's not as bad as it was before because after I found out I had to go away for a few days. So I lowered the water level just to reduce some of the pressure. That's definitely helped, but yeah, it's not really a, uh, a long-term solution. The only option that we have, in my opinion, is to empty the tank out completely, then reinforce the stand, and then, yeah, just come up with a nice new layout. I have, of course, thought about keeping the current layout intact and reinforcing the stand uh, with the tank still on it. I just don't think that's a really good way to go about it because we kind of need to bend this top layer back in, in position again, and that's going to put more pressure on the glass, I think. So I don't think that's a safe way to, to do it. Also, the current layout, I mean, because we had to lower the water level, the plants on top really suffered from that as well. So just overall, the layout just doesn't really look good anymore. And that also has an effect on how I enjoy this aquarium. And at the moment, I'm just not really enjoying it. Because I'm not enjoying it, the fish are also suffering because they're not getting the attention they deserve. So I think the best way is to start over again. I have a cool idea for a new layout and that's going to bring back my enjoyment. It's going to be better for the fish as well. So. Yeah, I'm excited. Let's get, let's get started. So let me talk you guys through my plan for this. I think we first have to set up a temporary home for the fish. So I just cleaned out my pond from outside. It's quite a big container, big vessel, so they can definitely stay in here for the time being. Um, so we'll first remove all the big pieces of hardscape, all the wood and all the big rocks. Then we can catch the fish, uh, transfer them to the pond. After that, we can just empty out the big shallow completely. So remove all the sand, remove all the substrate, all the hardscape give the tank a good clean as well. Then remove the tank from the stand, then reinforce the stand. After the stand is reinforced, we can put the tank back on and then just start from scratch again. Come up with a nice new layout, put the fish back in, and that's it. I'm thinking it's gonna take uh, two, three days, something like that. All right, so let's start by shutting off the filter first. Filter off, heater off as well. Now we can fill up the pond. So that's the pond filled up. Let me just move that out of the way a little bit. All right, and now we can start taking this apart. So I think this piece of wood on top wasn't even attached to anything, so we should be able to just lift that up. Of course, the plants are attached to it. Oof. Here we go. It's the first piece removed. Instantly made a big mess. Let's see if I can remove this main piece of hardscape. I think I've glued it to some rocks, but I'm not sure if it's still attached to anything. What's <sighs> heavy? Here we go. Right, so that's the entire layout destroyed in like two seconds. Um, let's see what else can we do. Over here, I have a piece of wood with some java fern attached to it. This actually came from my 70 liter scapers thing that I just rescaped as well. So I'm gonna put this in a pond. It's gonna be a nice place to hide for the fish. Yeah, so we'll just drop this in here. And then the fish will feel much safer. I just need to check that there's no fish behind this wall of lava rocks because I wanna keep that in for now. Uh, we can just remove everything from the front. Then we can catch all the fish. And then after that's done, all, after all the fish are gone, we can remove this entire wall because if we would remove that now, then all of the substrate behind is gonna come rolling forward and create a big mess. So yeah, that's it. I don't see anything. I put the heater in the pond as well. No, I think we're all good. Okay, that's all the big obstacles removed. I now want to start draining the water level even further. That's going to make it a lot easier to catch all the fish as well. So let's continue. Right, time to catch some fish. 
I just found some scrap um, acrylic or plexiglass and I'm gonna put that as a little barrier somewhere over here. The majority of the fish are on that side and we're just gonna make it make the aquarium smaller so they can't just go constantly back and forth and that should make it easier to catch them but also make it less stressful for them basically. Okay, so about 30 minutes of catching fish later. I think I've got most of them, but I'm sure there's still a bunch of them hiding underneath the, uh, underneath the rocks. So I'm gonna like slowly remove the rocks, making sure that the, uh, the substrate behind is not gonna shift too much, and then hopefully catch last of the fish. So that did not go according to plan. I somehow managed to glue that last rock to the foam pad that's underneath. I used a little foam pad underneath all the rocks to kind of protect the glass. And after I pulled out the last rock, I pulled that foam pad with it, which made a big mess. So I'm just gonna do it quickly drain the last bit of water, catch the last fish, and then we can start cleaning this mess. Yeah, I thought I was almost done, but there's still loads of shrimp in here. Quite a few fish as well, so we still got more work to do. By the way, quick tip, if you want to be able to like drain the water as low as possible without having to worry to you know, siphon out any fish or something, just push the siphon in a little bit of uh, filter foam. That way you can't really siphon out any creatures, but it will still, it will still drain the water, you know, so just a simple tip. And we're all clean. So it's now actually the next day. Yesterday I just finished cleaning the tank and I didn't really record anything because let's be honest, it's actually pretty boring to, to watch that as well. So we're all clean, so we can now focus on preparing the cabinet. Right, so I wanna reinforce this cabinet from the inside as well as from underneath. So for the inside, I have four of these long sticks. And for underneath, I'm not entirely sure yet what I'm gonna do because I think that's why the main issue and why this problem started from in the first place. You can probably already see from this angle that the floor is completely uneven and the stand doesn't have adjustable legs. So I had to come up with a DOI solutions to fix that basically. And as you can see over here, we just have a tiny gap between the bottom plate and the floor. And over there, I had to basically raise it by like four or five centimeters, something like that. And I think I didn't raise it enough in the center, especially on that side, because that's where it kind of started to cave in as well. So we need to add some support from the bottom as well. So I've just cut a few of these uh, wooden blocks that I'm thinking to slide underneath there. I've also cut them at a slight angle so they will match the, the gap that we have underneath. I'm hoping that, that will provide enough support and then I'm also thinking to kind of raise this, this one right here and maybe that one as well, just to kind of even it out a little bit more. Hopefully that will work. And then for the inside, let me show you how I'm gonna do that. Yeah, so like I said, I have four of these sticks and I'm gonna place them basically on the inside of the right and the left cabinet, so on this side. Um, in the middle we have a shelf that I don't really want to get rid of, just to uh, support a little bit. And I'm thinking if you just place it on this side, this side this should be good as well. Um, on this side it's quite easy, I can just remove all this uh, mess and just prepare it properly. On this side though, however, I have the filter and also this slide-out platform that I made a while ago. And I need to remove the slide-out platform to be able to fit those sticks in there. So that's a bit of a, an issue. Not really an issue, but it's just going to take a little bit of extra work. Okay, that's all the obstacles removed. I'm guessing that, you know, having this massive heavy external filter on that side, plus the 3 liter compartment for the auto top off on that side, was not really helping the case uh, as well, of course, putting even more pressure on this side that's already not supported properly. So yeah, we, uh, I think we can quite easily fix it. Just put a little bit more extra support underneath the cabinet, put those beams in the, in the compartments, and I think we should be all good. So yeah, I don't know if it's necessary, but I think I'm just gonna remove the aquarium for now. Can I do this with, by myself? Oh. Lightweight, all good. I mean, I don't know how straight these supports are, but you can literally see a gap going from underneath there 
So that's uh, there's definitely a slight curve to it. Okay, I think we're all good. So I slightly raised those two legs in the center. So that one and that one. Raise them up a little bit. And I've also placed those blocks that I showed you guys earlier underneath there as well. So right now we are completely level. And you can also see that the doors are now properly straight again. So this door is not scraping against the top layer anymore. So I think we're all good. Let's now move in with those um, wooden beams in the center. And then I think we should put the tank back on, fill up with water just so we can kind of test it with some weight on there as well. Here we go. That's the sticks in. I don't know why I'm calling them sticks. I'm not even sure what's the correct English term for it, but yeah, they're basically just wedged in place so they're not even screwed in or something, but they're firm and they're not moving anywhere. So I think the next step is to just fill the, uh, put the tank back on, fill up with water so we have some weight on the cabinet and then see if everything is still um, aligned and perfect. Let's do that. Here we go, full of water. Everything is looking good. Everything is level, everything is straight. Nothing is bending anymore, so I'm super happy. So now we can start thinking of the new layout for the Big Shallow. So this is gonna be Big Shallow 3.0, I guess, or V3. Yeah, this was uh, quite a big task. I mean, this video is probably gonna be like 10 minutes or so, but this <laughs> took me two full days. Before I wrap this video up, I'm gonna give you guys a sneak preview of the new hardscape, my new idea. Let's do that right now. Here we go. <laughs> I know that's completely in the frame, but this is the main piece of hardscape that I'm going to use. I've had this for a while now. I got it together with the, uh, the previous hardscape materials. So this is also from Rio. This is called um, Neptune Driftwood. So it's very light in color, but it's also very light in weight. It really doesn't weigh anything. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to uh, use this. So that's a sneak preview of the new hardscape layout. Something I, I don't really know yet what I'm going to make, but this uh, piece of wood will definitely be in there. So that's it guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Take care.